Alan, good morning to you. How are you? Morning, lads. How are you? Yeah, good. Um, it's hard to know how important these games are in terms of the lessons that we're learning at the moment from the Rainbow Cup because, like, no one ever grew up dreaming of winning a Rainbow Cup. And yet, these are full-blown matches with players playing for form ahead of lines, all that kind of stuff. So what are you taking away from these games? It's difficult, Chair. I think, um, I suppose, round one was... Um, I was a little bit more excited and pleased with the games. I think um, we saw some really good performances, some good rugby. Um, I just I just thought round two was a little bit... Um, didn't get as much excited about it, but... Um, you know, they still are into pro games. I think there's, as you said, there's a lot to play for for players. Um, the line squad is picked. Some now just have to get through performances. Um, others have a point to prove. Um, there's no Irish tour this summer. Um, so I think that added a little bit of spice to, to the Rainbow Cup that we would have seen a little bit more intensity and desire from guys to try and Try and make a summer tour and <clears throat> grab some attention. But look, they're all professionals. They've got to, they've got to try and perform and um, take something. There's an opportunity to take something out of the season, whether you win the Rainbow Cup or not. But um, they've got to keep going and keep performing. Um, also, we're very disappointing on Friday night. I think uh, backed up a really bad second half against against Leicester with a a really poor performance at Thomond Park and. Um, Leinster reacted then to to what happened in La Rochelle the week before after going 16 down. So I suppose if you're a player, um, the juices mightn't be flowing as much as, uh, as, as you know, a Pro 14 knockout game or a big Pro 14 game or a European game. But still, at the same time, there's there's a lot to play for, for, for the individuals. And from a coaching perspective, is there stuff that you think that any of the four coaching setups in Ireland are going to be learning about their players or patterns of play or any of that kind of stuff? Or do they end up just trying to focus on individual performance markers at this point of the season too? No, they've got to take something out of us themselves. And um, for Munster, it's, uh, I think just trying to expand a little bit their attacking game. Um, I thought defensively they were very strong and aggressive and they continued on with that That aggressive approach that they they and dominance that they had against Leinster a couple of weeks ago, albeit it was a, a weaker Leinster team. Um, I think the concern for Ulster was um, how physical Munster were and how they just weren't able to cope or get over the game line. Um, and, you know, it was always going to be difficult for Ulster going down to, to Thurman Park. And we, we spoke about the psychological effects. I think there's, there's a lot to be gained here in the next couple of weeks for teams. Uh, particularly in these inter-pro games, you know, um, Connacht obviously have to go to Thoman Park on Friday and and Leinster host Ulster. So, you know, there's still there's there's a sense of a bit of desperation from Connacht and and Ulster now with the, with their performances. But of course, the coaches can build on stuff. You can work on things. You can integrate some players. You can have a little bit more of a look. There's less pressure, if you like. Um, and we've probably seen that in the first couple of rounds where. Teams are have the shackles off a little bit. Um, you can still see, you know, obviously the, you know, the blueprints or or, or the pattern or the type of game that some teams play. But we've seen a little bit more, a looser approach to to the Rainbow Cup, and there's less pressure. I think it's not the be all and end all, but still there's um, there's an opportunity, and you know, I'd be very surprised if. If Leinster didn't, uh, you know, go for every game now and try and win the Rainbow Cup, it's not wouldn't be wouldn't have been high on their priority list. But now, I think they and that performance after, you know, 15 minutes against Connacht showed that um, they're still a very good side and that um, the reaction was very very positive for them. But you know, everyone has their own reasons and 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 desire to try and win these matches. Munster trying to get a trophy. Um, they're in a good position now to win the rest of their games, but I just have a feeling now themselves and Benetton are the only two teams who've won won, won the first two games. Um, and it's a straight straight 12 teams and the top two will go into a final. Uh, we still don't know what the fixtures are for, for four, five and six, four and five. Um, I think the teams know themselves who they're playing the next couple of weeks. But um, 
There's a fair bit to be gained. And I think you can try things a little bit different and you can look at the individual reactions. If I was a coach of any of the teams, I'd be looking I'd be looking at players who drop their standards a little bit or, or players in the opposite who who really show a, a desire and a want to to improve and get better. And you can build stuff on the back of that for next season. I think it is impossible to separate some of the big performers at the weekend from all the lines chat over the course of the last week. And while a lot of that chat has focused on people who didn't make it, people who had injury worries, people who weren't durable enough to go on the tour, we've maybe overlooked some of the people who, who did make it a bit. And and Connor Murray is, is one player, Alan, who's really timed this perfectly in terms of fitness, in terms of form, and it is in really good shape going to South Africa. Yeah, he was very good the other night, I think. And... Um it's amazing what even a selection like that can do if if there is any chink in the confidence i think you know connor's the last 18 months or two years has been up and down he's had critics uh he's produced big performances he's produced poor performances um and that's the nature of the beast but i think it's hard to judge anyone on these games because i think also were very poor the other night i was really disappointed with him i thought that um, the Munster were good now, in fairness, don't get me wrong, they were very, very strong and, and, and dominant and aggressive and um, Johan van Graan got a continuation of the, I suppose, the frustration, the anger going back to the Pro 14 final and, and losing against Toulouse, which was a tough couple of weeks for them and they're the ones showing that um, they want to improve their performances and build on it and, and, and take something out of this and yeah, Conor Murray, on the back of, of his forwards, and I played very well in front of him. He he performed very, very well, uh, was dangerous throughout, making little snipes, breaks, and that that's what you want to see from top top players, you know, <clears throat> in these games that you perceive to be um, not the most important. I think they're the little things that coaches will watch, how players perform, and he showed again the other night that... Um, you know, there is that desire, that passion, that fire is still there and uh, he produced a very good performance. I guess for, for anybody who is on the Lions plane as it stands at the moment, these games are kind of important, but not really. All you need to do is to be fit so that when you get to the tour, you get the opportunity to show the selectors that your form is good. Or how, how good does your form need to be of the next couple of weeks before that Japan game, before they actually leave? Um, I think in an ideal world, you've got to, um, as a player, you can't think. Uh, look, at, at the back of their mind, I think they'll be all uh, hoping and praying that nobody picks up a knock or a bang in the next couple of weeks because even a small knock, I think, could, could put someone's tour in jeopardy, given that the tour is, is con condensed a little bit. Um, but you you just you can't you can you can't think about that you can't think about injury you've got to try and just go out and play and perform and 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 build on your own individual match practice fitness level um and 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 confidence if you can keep keep that those performances going i think obviously when i got when i got selected in 2009 um the first match afterwards was the scarlets and and um, I didn't in any way think that, you know, I've got to mind myself now in the next couple of weeks. You you can't do that. Um, when we watch some of these games, we, we all think, we sometimes think players just have to get through it. But I think from a player's point of view, um, you've just got to go out and do what you've been doing and, and not really focus on that. In that game, obviously, Tomas O'Leary got a, an horrendous injury, injury, which was heartbreaking and... Um, in that game and uh, it's 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 a tricky one i think you know deep down players will be just praying and hoping that they can get through the next couple of weeks and and if that's on the back of of good performances and good form and and um i think that the first couple of games i think the lines first test will be selected on the back of of the the games that they play as a group the japan game and the other games that they play before that first test so i don't think any of the coaches. Obviously, if someone is alarmingly bad and missing tackles or, or just really, really underperforming, it would concern Warren Gatlin. But I think any of the players who, they don't have to do anything spectacular. They just got to make sure that they're fit, um, getting around the field, and and look like they, 
they 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 want to perform and that they're getting involved all the time because yeah. The no worst thing that can happen is fair standing back. No one's actually playing themselves into the test team by the club forum between now oh, and... I don't think so. No. I don't think so. I think there's... Look, there's certain guys that if they... If they finish well in the Premiership in England and they, they, they put in top-class performances um, or if, you know, certain guys get into a Rainbow Cup final or or whatever like that, you know, of course it would grab the attention of, of, of the selectors and Warren Gatland, but... I think overall players just have got to look look good in the next couple of weeks, um, not look bad if that makes sense. Because if you're looking bad and you're you're trudging around the fields and looking like you are minding yourself, that that would probably frustrate a coach or catch catch Warren Gatland's eye. It's just about keeping the fitness levels up, and obviously you've got to hope and pray that you don't pick up injuries. But you'd try and put that to the back of your mind because um, that's risky if you stand off and if you're you're minding yourself a little bit. Um, that's something that um, wouldn't be advisable. I don't think anybody will do that. Um, I was hoping Jack Conan would play the full game the other night. I wanted to just see him be a dominant figure, be someone who kind of put his chest out and said, yeah, I got picked. A um, little bit of a surprise selection, but here's my quality. That's what I, this is what I can do. And it was a shame, but you saw the effort levels of ring rows and um, you know the frustration probably that he would have but I think there's a lot of there's definitely going to be injuries there's definitely going to be it's 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 always happened in Lions tours that there's going to be some injuries um and players have to be ready and and willing to to kind of jump at that chance if they get the opportunity I think the guys who are on the periphery have to have to keep playing well show good attitude um you saw Sinclair for Kyle Sinclair for 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 Bristol uh, at the weekend getting the man of the match award and um, I'm not sure if you saw the interview afterwards. He showed the emotion and uh, what it meant to him. And so, you know, I if if I would be amazed if Warren Gatlin didn't see that and go, that that's exactly what I want. There, that's what I want from the players who didn't get picked and didn't get selected. If somebody gets injured, that they're super fit, ready to go. They've minded themselves in this period of time. Be very easy to kind of switch off now at the end of the season and. You know, get through these the last couple of games and um, let yourself go a bit. Not do the extra fitness sessions, the extra skill sessions, all that kind of stuff. Um, but you know, there will be unfortunately for some players they they may not make the plane because they may pick up injuries and knocks. Who was the most unfortunate to miss out, Alan, across all countries? Because I know this is the first time we've had you on since the the Lions announcement. Um. I think Johnny Sexton is. Um, James Ryan hasn't played. Uh, it, it, you know, if you go back, if you go back a couple of weeks, even the start of the Six Nations, James Ryan's name was was nailed on. You know, he was there was talks of different periods over the last two years about potential captaincy and the acceleration that that and the improvement that he had shown. Um, it's a really tough blow for him. Um, because he hasn't become a bad player. He's just unfortunate with the, the concussion he got. Um, maybe a little dip in form as well. I remember interviewing him two years ago at the end of the, near the end of the 2018 season, and like it was sensational, 20-something games, all wins, Grand Slam, about to play in the European final, Pro 14 final. Um, it was it was sensational what was happening there, and he's he's um, he's played a lot of rugby since then. And this year, obviously, with the pandemic and a lot of chopping and changing, and then that injury he got, um, it just didn't do him any favors. I think, and I think it's unfair for 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 people to judge Leinster on the La Rochelle game and their their lines contingent, the players who missed out. Um, it's it's a tough one. It's a harsh one. Um, but I think Warren Gatlin just needed to see, he need, they needed to see Sexton back out in the field in the last couple of weeks, Jonathan Sexton, and probably a more dominant performance from, from, from James Ryan. So I feel sorry for them. Gary Ringrose as well. On another day, a couple of run, uh, good, run, good games for Leinster, all three would have, been, would have been on that plane. So from an Irish perspective, I think that's, that's unfortunate. I think someone like Billy Vunapola, um, Johnny May, 
I think Johnny May is a really kind of tough one as well because I've looked at him the last couple of years and thought this guy's the best winger in the world. Um, and, you know, so they're unfortunate with their timing. It is about timing. I think Alan Wynne Jones said that the other day. You know, <clears throat> England had a, a really poor Six Nations and, and for various different reasons. And that cost, even though they still have 11 players on the plane, um, that cost them. But I, 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 you, I think, you know, it's hugely disappointing from an Irish point of view that that those three didn't make it. And a Leinster point of view, and for the players themselves personally, because on another day they could be on that plane. Is, is there an impact on, on how long Sexton plays? Like, Does this make him more determined to last through to the, the next World Cup? Or what do you think? Um, yeah, I don't know. Someone said that to me the other day, that um, will this kind of dent the, the desire and, and the want and the... Um, his ability to kind of keep going. I don't think so because I think he, it may have, have a benefit, you know, he'll have a summer off, which he won't, wouldn't have wanted. Um, he's got to recover actually, obviously from from those um, head knocks that he's had and, and they are concerning for sure. Um, I, I'm, you know, people are trying to figure out why, why is he getting so many? Why did he get three in, in recent times? Um, I don't know. It's not. It, it, some of them are very unlucky. You look at the Welsh one. It's a knee when he's carrying the ball. It's it. He had the ball. Um, it's just frustrating and it's bad luck and it's timing for him. Um, so, you know, he has another year. He signed a new contract. So I, I'd be. Um, I would be very surprised if you see any slacking off from Johnny Sexton. And he said it himself. It's a year by year bit thing now. This this will this will hurt him a lot. You know, this will hurt a lot that. He hasn't um, got on this tour because it would have been um, a big goal of his to get on the tour. And um, we're not really sure where the World Cup situation is now, whether he will continue on. You know, that'll, that conversation will start next December, um, whether he signs another contract or an extension or January, maybe after post Christmas. So it's, um, it depends on what the player wants himself. You know, I know myself when you get to that stage, it, it is year on year, and that's what he said recently. I think secretly and deep down, he would love to go to the next World Cup, but he probably won't be saying that as much anymore. I think he will just see um, where he's at. But it wouldn't surprise me in the slightest if he does, because um, that's the type. And that, and that was one of the reasons why I would have taken him to South Africa. He's a big game player. I think Rog said that, used that quote. Um, and that's what he is. Uh, he was a big loss for Leinster and La Rochelle. And um, it just depends what he's feeling himself. You know, at that stage, things can change in your own mind. He can re it can reignite the, the the spark in him again to, to, to go if he gets a good break, spends time with the family this summer. Not what he would have wanted. Um, but let's see what happens next year with, with Johnny Sexton and where he's, where he's performing and how he recovers. Yeah, and, and look, if, if he is going to somehow be a late call-up, you'd need to see him back playing, and I suppose that was the other big doubt. Like, he, he hasn't not been selected because he's not playing well. He hasn't been selected because he's not available for selection at the moment for Leinster and hasn't played for a while. Like, that was the concern that Gatlin had. It wasn't that he wasn't a big game player, and you don't know that he's going to be fit by the time the stuff rolls around. You know, kind of, it, it, it's an interesting situation now for Leinster. Do you stand him down for the rest of the season and say, take that rest because ultimately this isn't important or do you get him back on the field on the off chance that one of the out has gets injured and he's like well I need to prove my fitness if that happens well when he's fit getting back in the field I think that's what he'll want that's what I would want as a player and you know of course there is merit in what Warren Gatlin is saying you know he I think he needed to see Johnny Sexton in the last few weeks playing matches playing a couple of games he hasn't played that many games this season and um and that's the issue. That's what went against him. Um, I still would have, you know, tried to get him in there. But, you know, if it backfires, then people will be saying Warren Gatlin was wrong to pick him. And, you know, there's there's a lot of, there was a lot of, uh, you know, Dan Bigger has played well this year. Finn Russell has, has played well. And Farrell, obviously, is the third third fly half. Or he, yeah. may be the, he may be the one that starts at fly half. But um, it's just unfortunate, you know. And it's the same for James Ryan. I don't think it was about solely about performance i think we've seen these guys in the last couple of weeks would have possibly got them on the plane which is is frustrating and disappointing but still eight eight irish guys on the tour is is brilliant bundy Aki was the one probably blindsided everybody as well um 
But again, I understand why Guy, why Gatlin picked him and why he's he's going to be on that and that tour. Yeah. All right, Alan. Good stuff. Thanks a million for joining us. Cheers.